I enjoyed the game Diablo, Diablo 2. I don't really like Diablo 3. And I, Blizzard is dead. It's gone. Even though they exist as part of Activision, it's not Blizzard. I've got my shiv, and that belly of yours looks like a nice place to bury it. Well, howdy, 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 nearly senior citizen here. Greetings, boys, girls, and all of our non-binary friends, and welcome to this, a brand new day, wherein I do not have my overhead light on. I'm not quite sure if that is an incandescent, a fluorescent, or an LED bulb. I have to open that up and check and, and see. I want to make sure it's an LED so it'll be cooler. I think my light down there might be an LED one. I'm not sure. It's not giving off a lot of heat, so it's either an LED or a CFL. Ugh. It, is, it was hot. Hot, hot, hot. Went downstairs, not that warm. Come upstairs, it was blistering. So joy. Yeah, so the fan is on in the window. Gonna be on 24-7. As soon as I'm done recording, the door is opening back up and I've got a fan going out there hard on high so there'll be a good bit of breeze. Unfortunately, I cannot do my window fan most efficiently. And I'll talk about that in a moment because, hey, I want to thank, you know, to a lot of people and <laughs> I lost my mind. If you could toss me a like, that'd be very cool. If you could subscribe to the channel, that'd be awesome. If you could leave me a comment, I love engagement, thumbs up for that. I would like to thank each and every one of my Patreon patrons. These literally beautiful and literally awesome people are literally beautiful and literally awesome. Hopefully, hopefully I will have been able to fight through my executive dysfunction and get the list updated for today. I honestly cannot tell what the day will be like. We shall see. If you would like to be a beautiful and awesome person, like one of those beautiful and awesome people, there are links in the video description. And if you'd like to help me out without becoming a patron, there's a PayPal link. If you'd like to help me out without paying any money at all, there's an Amazon wish list link with stuff like cat food on it. So thumbs up on that. And hey, front loading of videos. Oh, my heart went and just uh, changed rhythm there. Always joyous. Uh, and of course, I worry about things like that because, hey, I developed a, a minor, hopefully minor, problem with my heart, I think, because of the Ritalin that I was taking. So I have to watch that now. Uh, but still, yesterday was hot. Hot, hot, hot. Blistering. Death-like. Okay, it wasn't anywhere near that bad, but it was hot. And even with the fan open fan open window open and fan on and this door open and fans are running unfortunately the best way to get proper airflow is to have a fan several feet away from where you want it to be you want to blow air out the window the best way to do that is to put it a few feet away from the window and this was pointed out in a good little science thing on the video because the guy was showing a big, big tube, huge tube made out of plastic, just really thin. It was a collapsed bag. And he was saying, can you fill this up with lung full of air, one lung full of air? And just put it up against his mouth and blew. One lung full of air barely fills up a, a thing at all. But with that same one lung full of air holding it about this far away from his mouth and blowing, woof, it filled up the entire thing. Because when you're right there, you only have what you have. But when you do it from a distance, it drags because of resistance and air pressure, everything with it. And you get a huge amount of air. If you want to blow air out of your window, you need to have it a good foot or more away from the window. I don't have any place I can do that. My windows are high enough that there's nothing I can set it on without it being too low. I'd have to build a platform. I can't do that. So unfortunately, it's right in the window and that's inefficient. But life is life, life is life. Hopefully it's not gonna be too hot because when I went out walking, it's, oy vey, it was, it was hot last night. But of course, I still have to exercise. You gotta take care of your body. So I went walking all the way up to Walmart and back. So I barely bought any of the things that I need and. Uh, I need to get a screwdriver. I can't find any of my screwdrivers. This last time, when they emergency said, we're going to be coming in in four hours, and then it's been two weeks and we haven't seen anyone yet, I went and put things away. 
I don't know where they went. I was non-ADHD medicated. So now I gotta buy a just a cheap screwdriver so I can unscrew the screws on my fans and then get the garbage off of the inside so that I get good airflow. Unfortunately, there's a lot of dust here. And just in Shelton in general, no matter where I've lived, both in the house that I and my wife were buying, living in my brother-in-law's garage, and then coming here, it has just been dust central. I went for years with my computers before, never blowing the dust out of them. Now, I have, within, with the, when I got this computer here, within the first six months, I burned out an air supply because I didn't open up the air, I open up the air, didn't crack open the computer case and use air to blow out all the dust. So yeah, every six months or so, I got, well, every three months or so, I got to crack that thing open and use my air compressor to blow the dust out. Ugh. <laughs> Gotta love that. So, yeah, uh, that part's fun. But yesterday I had a minor problem falling asleep at one point. But you know, back before I was medicated, yeah, back before I was medicated for ADHD, I used to fall asleep all the time while sitting in this chair. So if I only fall asleep once, that's not bad. And I took a guanfacine blood pressure slash ADHD med last night to bring my blood pressure down because I took a Stratera this morning because honestly and truly, yeah, I really do seem to work best if I take like a Stratera every day, every other day, or every two days, which unfortunately for me means here's like the Goldilocks zone and I've got a rocket and I gotta fire the rocket and then stop firing the rocket so that I drift up here and then start to fall and then fire the rocket and bring it up and then let it fall again and then fire the rocket so I can keep it going whoosh, whoosh, whoosh to keep it here. So yeah, my body's never gonna be able to get used to the med, but so far, so far, mentally, it really seems to work. Last night when I was out on walkies, and I'm going to come back to this, I spent a lot of time thinking about something. And when I got back, I was still thinking about it. This morning, the first thing I started thinking of when I woke up was that very thing. When I am taking Stratera these days, if I take it every day, I can't remember a single thing I thought of the night before. When I am unmedicated, I cannot really remember what I've been thinking of. Taking intermittent Stratera seems to work. So I've got a lot of stuff that I've thought about last night, which is really only one thing, but I'll, I'll talk about that in a moment because I just wanted to continue speaking about music. I really, really, really want to start doing reactions again, but I need to get things settling down with my mood and all that. Hopefully, if this is going to be working with the Stratera, I should be doing better. Unfortunately, with my mental conditions and the state of the world, especially the country I live in, my mood is volatile at best, and I have to fight to keep on an even keel, even medicated. Oh boy, with the worry of my SSI, whether or not it's going to keep coming and going, with the worries about the house and whether or not I'm even going to be able to have a house to live in, on top of what's happening in the country with every bit of civil rights slowly being dismantled, uh, it's hard, but I want to either get back into doing the reactions or at least be able to make a video and put it on there explaining I didn't mean to just vanish on my reactions channel because I have felt terrible that I have not even been able to make a video explaining what happened. But with my executive dysfunction, every day I don't make a video, it gets a little bit harder to make a video. But I've been playing games. There's a lot of games that I enjoy and I play a whole bunch of them. One of them I have been playing a lot and I continue to do so. I enjoy the isometric 
Diablo-like type of game. I enjoyed the game Diablo, Diablo 2. I don't really like Diablo 3. And I, Blizzard is dead. It's gone. Even though they exist as part of Activision, it's not Blizzard. I mean, Diablo Immortal is Diablo 3, except they spent six years figuring out how to monetize every single bit of it. it uh, Blizzard is dead. But I enjoy that type of game, and one of them that has been done really well is the game Grim Dawn. And even though it came out like 2015 or 2018, they're still constantly doing changes to it. Content updates, balancing updates, all sorts of updates. They just had another update. So I have been going through and I started up a new game. The last one I was playing I both enjoyed and did not because you can play veteran or hardcore. I've never actually finished it even though I did. <laughs> I didn't beat the, the last boss. I needed to grind, but this was back when I was unmedicated, so I never did it. But you can play on harder mode. Veteran bumps up the difficulty some, and I was playing it on that and not really enjoying it. So I've started again on regular things with regular difficulty and we'll see how that goes. It's a good game. I enjoyed it. It's very fun. And of course, when I was out on walkies, one of the things that I was thinking of was recontextualizing things and revisiting things and then how all the various characters work. Now I have to figure out when and where exactly the Crimson King dumb and the King in Crimson come in contact with Utah. Because revisiting what happens on the night of terror, everybody's feeling pressure, even in the Crimson Kingdom on the inside. Everyone's feeling this mental pressure of stuff that's happening. Because the Kaiju's getting ready to put this all stuff in motion, and there's a lot of things to put in motion, and everybody is feeling that pressure. And then that night, the pressure stops. And at 1 o'clock a.m., the terror starts. That's when also the king is, they feel the, the difference in pressure. It's like, what happened? Something has happened. Something has happened. And then the reports start coming in about what's happening on the inside because they had their booster slash repeater for their mobile phone system in Apple Rock. But now there's, Apple Rock has gone dark. Everything about it has gone dark. They're trying to figure it out. One of the technicians has to bring up to the king that this sort of thing, this, this, this is what we predicted with the one model of booster that we had been using. That's why we had a recall and destroy order for all of these boosters once this problem was figured out. This had to have been that kind of booster. And then, of course, as they're still getting news and trying to figure out and discovering that people can't even get to Apple Rock but via Glamour, the best people that they have that can ride the line via Glamour and get there fast, they can't connect, can't get there. The closest they'll be able to get is like 500 kilometers away, and then you got to travel by foot or vehicle or mounted travel. It is incommunicado, and it's what they predicted if they had this booster. As they're trying to figure out the disaster as it's going on, later one of the computer systems has a, a first notification of an error. There is a video that has corrupted metadata, and that's when they watch this to try and figure out corrupted metadata. Our system shouldn't even have that. That's when they're seeing the decision. This was a video made of the decision to put the thing in Apple Rock. And that is when all of the people that they're being recorded at this mission just go blank faced and go, yes, we shouldn't put it here. Let's put it there. And then as soon as it's done, everyone's back to normal. But they have memories of that and it all feels organic, but obviously it wasn't. They were being manipulated and they can see it. So all of this stuff is coming in. Then they get the reports that they're finding where, yeah, they got the video thing about this one booster was in a mislabeled carton, crate, 
that had been sitting in a warehouse, the only mislabeled one that ended up in Apple Rock. But the people who built it should have recognized it, except there was so much drama happening at this Apple Rock place because, as it turns out, they didn't recognize it because there was so much turnover at the actual Apple Rock office there. Uh, as it turns out, for the past five years, every month they've been making personnel requirement requests and getting them because everyone just keeps getting eaten there. Everyone in town is fine. You work here, you're going to get eaten. There are roughly 12 people that work in this office, and every single year, every one of them gets eaten. There has been personal requests to get replacements all for the last year until just every one got it. And then there was no one. And then the night of terror when the thing exploded. Nobody to say anything was going wrong because they're all eaten. The kaiju did not have to do that. There are a lot of different ways for people to be removed from an equation without just being callously eaten so that a report won't go out. But that's what happened. So 70 people over five years they sent to this place to effectively feed the wildlife just for the night of terror. Utok finds out about this. This is early in their relationship. When Utok is not feeling so happy and friendly toward the king, so when Utok discovers this, they have to grind the rusty dagger in the wound. So the king is just right at this point, ready, willing, and able to take on all burdens of grief because they're feeling awful. They feel it was their fault. They had been sending people to feed the wildlife and they had a very successful you know, feed the wildlife program using their citizens. And when Utok finds out, it's roughly along the lines of I had heard 70 people dead in five years and you did not even know. You did not even know. My grand and glorious king, my domain became large enough and rich enough over 2,500 years ago. I became a target for other lairs that have been attacking me constantly and I have been defending myself during all that time. I am happy enough to fight for my people by myself, but my people, against my wishes, against my desires, against what I want them to do, insist on the right to help fight in their own defense. I cannot say no. That would drive a dagger into the heart of my people, and I could not do that. In the past 2,500 years, my people have fought next to me, and we have struggled and fought against enemy after enemy. During this time, I have lost less than 30 of my brave warriors, and I remember every name, every way they died, and the time that they died. I remember this. Seventy of your people you effectively shoved into the open maws and hungry bellies of animals. And you didn't even know it. You didn't even know it. I, at this time, have no words for you, O oh my great and magnanimous king. Because would Utak say lies like that just to drive the dagger into the king's back and then grind that rusty dagger in the wound? Oh hell yeah! Oh hell yeah! Remember, Utak is a bastard. A bastard. A total douche canoe. Not a good individual. 
early enough in their career right now, early enough in the relationship to want to hurt. That changes in time, but not at the moment. And I've opened up 24 hours worth of comments. I'm going to go through and thank however many people have left me comments in the past 24 hours. If I mispronounce the username, no disrespect is intended, even though I count American <laughs> input lag, American Sign Language. Well, you've already seen how my brain works, and I'm so late on all this right now. We have Adrian. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Four Elder Scrolls games at the same time. I should play Skyrim, except I don't like that game. Confused Owl 29, thumbs up and thank you. Good to see you in the comments. Jay, thumbs up and hey, life is life. <laughs> Rahul Bunty, thumbs up and thank you. Stephen Blanchard, yeah, I learned a lot in that playthrough of Daggerfall. Oof. Jesse Koskinen, hokey smokes. Oh boy. Dilson the Mouth, thumbs up and thank you. Ben B, greatly appreciated. Coney Senyard, thumb Cody, not Coney. Cody Senyard, thumbs up and thank you. Favel. Hey, it's been a time, and it's good to see you in the comments. Ten people who left me comments in the past 24 hours to get me out of my head and into the world and dealing with real people. Thumbs up, and thank you so much. I got phone calls I got to try and make, so hopefully I'm going to get those phone calls done. Hopefully you can get done the things that you want to get done. If not, just survive. Try it again tomorrow. With all the pandemics out there still, please, no matter where you are in the world, Take appropriate precautions for your situation and your location. Do not go tossing your body onto the end of life corpse pile any sooner than you have to. Get vaxxed, get boosted, just be smart. So, until we meet again, you take care. Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side, and that is a very good thing. <laughs>